so in this lecture, I'm concerned with the, the development of the Mesora Plain in South Central Crete from the beginning to the end of the protopalatial period, focusing both on the role impact of the palatial site of Festos in its territory and on its relationship with the surrounding centers, whatever settlements, funerary complexes, and cultural places. The protopalatial period corresponds to the 19th, 17th century before Christ and relates the period of the so-called first palaces. My purpose is that of reporting the changes of the Mesra plain from the foundation of the Festus Palace to its destruction, focusing not only on the period of the first palaces, but also on the periods immediately before and after it, that are respectively MM1A and MM3. In this presentation, I will concentrate on the protopalatial period since recent revisions of settlement and funerary complexes on, of the Mesera Plain have indeed provided finer chronological divisions for the period, allowing us to follow changes in shorter time spans. Moreover, since the protopalatial period is often considered as a monolithic period, I will, like, I, I will analyze it as composed by three different phases that are MM1B, MM2A, and MM2B. In this way, observations on the variation and developments from both of Festos and of its surrounding area throughout the entire period can be made phase by phase, and in particular, I will consider the following centers of the Western Mesera Plain. The coastal settlement of Comos, which is eight kilometers southwest to Festos, the center of Agietriada, which is only three kilometers northwest of Estas and is composed by sediment and the funerary area. The funerary complex of Camilari, which is about two kilometers southwest to Festos, and the Camaris Cave, which is located on the slopes of the Mount Ida, just north to Festos. Let's first focus on the time of the foundation of the palaces. Recent studies have suggested that the first Mainon palaces are architectural developments that began in the early Bronze Age, and thus that the emergence of the first palaces in MM1B cannot be considered a sudden event. The palaces have been interpreted as complexes which have developed over a long period of time and along the lines of earlier structures and spaces, such as the central courts. The central courts were used for the same communal practices from the early Bronze Age and even from the Neolithic period. This is indeed the case for, Mal uh, for Malia, where Olivier Pellon identified an early Manon to be court that he associated with a court-centered building, and where, as demonstrated by Ilse Scoop, in the protopalatial period, the main agents of change were located outside the palace, such as Carter Mew, in the case of Knossos, Colin McDonald has recently suggested that it is conceivable that the palace of Knossos, quote, was a long project that lasted for generations, punctuated by destructive episodes, notably in MM1B, and reaching a conclusion in MM2A, end of quote. But he also remarked that the first palace at Knossos was far too large to be considered only a building serving a central court of ceremonies, end of quote. And what about Festos? Let's now turn to the case of Festos. Recent studies by Simona Todoro have demonstrated that early Manon tree is an important phase that incorporated large-scale works of leveling and the creation of open courts for ceremonial activities. According to Todaro, the construction of a court-centered building at Festos dates back to early Minoan tree. The following MM1A phase, that means the last phase before the construction of the palace at Festos, is still well represented by the use of the same leveled areas, but it is not possible so far to see how the architectural remains of MM1A were located in the areas of the future palace. At Festos, there are some elements which speak in favor of strong continu continuity from the pre-palatial to the proto-palatial period. First, the first is the use of the same court to perform the same ceremonial and aggregative, aggregative functions that characterize the pre-palatial period. The second concerns pottery. Indeed, in the late pre-palatial period, that is MM1A, at Festos we find pottery groups that are stylistically and typologically similar 
to those of the early protopalatial period, to judge by the foundation deposits of the palace dated to early Minoan B. Nevertheless, today I would like to show that in spite of these elements of continuity, from MN1A to MN1B, there are also several elements of this continuity, which are visible at Festos, but mostly in the territory surrounding it. The first strongest factor of this continuity is the foundation of the southwest building of Festos with its new and innovative architectural feature, the well-preserved orthostat facade. The second factor concerns pottery, and here it is important to note that the Festian MN1B ceramic phase has recently been divided into early MN1B and MN1B. The early MN1B phase corresponds to the foundation of the first palace, while the MN1B phase to its initial period of use. This distinction is important because it is the MN1A pottery which is very similar to that of early MN1B whereas the MN1B pottery of Estos presents new wares, shapes, and decorative forms, displaying a new impetus in terms of innovation and artistic, artistic experimentation. With regards to pottery, a second element of this continuity is the appearance in MN1B of a new and important sharing of pottery between the, up, the aforementioned sites of the Western Mesora Plain. In particular, most of these sites reveal pottery that is absolutely identical and imitative of the Festian pottery. Whereas Festos maintained its role as leader in ceramic innovation throughout the protopalatial period. Finally, as we will see, the discontinuity is quite evident in the territory surrounding Festos, where new centers were founded precisely in the Mount B. As recently pointed by Filippo Carinci and Vincenzo La Rosa, the layout of the festal settlement changes in MN1B. When it occurs, the construction of the first, uh, sorry, of the southwest building with the orthostat facade and the related court known as the Lower West Court, Piazzale 70. Two, the pavement of the Middle West Court. Three, the construction of the Northwest building of the palace, you see, uh, southwest building, then the northwest building, and the pavement of the central court, the construction of some houses to the west of the middle west court, and you see here, uh, the foundation of new houses along the slopes of the palace hill that are Agia Futini and Calara quarters, as well as on the nearby Acropoli Mediana that you, you don't see here. At Festos, from MN1A to MN1B, the new constructions are the Southwest Building with a related Lower West Court and the Northwest Building. According to the recent hypothesis put forth forward by La Rosa, in MN1B, the Western facade of the Northwest Building of the First Palace was built in the same place as the late MN1B Western facade of the Second Palace. According to him, only in MN2, the western facade of the first palace was relocated, relocated and thus aligned with the facade of the southwest building. If the central and the middle west courts of Festos were already in use from pre-palatial times and in MN1B were only repaved, on the contrary, the lower west court would instead have been created ex novo at the same time as the construction of the southwest building, that is early MN1B. Although at Festos in MN1B the major investment is in the southwest building, some investment is visible in the town area too. In fact, between early MN1B and MN1B, new houses were constructed to the west of the Middle West Court, as well as at the aforementioned Agia Futini and Calara, located on the northeastern and southeastern slopes of the Palace Hill, respectively. In MO1B, a new impetus in, innov in innovation is detectable in pottery, as new wares, shapes, and styles appear at Festos. The most representative form of MO1B is the globular open spouted jar, which, together with hundreds of conical cups, is well attested in the fields of found in the quarter to the west of the Middle West Curve. From MO1B, to MM2A, the latter was likely employed as dump area for pottery used in ceremonial activities performed in a nearby court. 
Actually, in a man 1b, the open spouted jar is present of Festos, but is not well attested in the surrounding area of Festos, except for the cold place of the, of, uh, the Camaris cave. This suggests not only the ex exclusive link of Festos with the Camaris cave from MN1D, but also the possible ritual character of the Southwest building. In MN1B, also the pattern of the area surrounding Festos changes, as attested by, first, the foundation of the coastal settlement of Comos. Second, the increase in pottery and architectural remains at the settlement of Ayatriada. Three, the foundation of the second Tolos tomb at Agietriada, that is Tolos Beta. Four, the ex novo foundation of the Camillari Cemetery with the construction of the main Tolos tomb. And, and five, the strong increase in the use of the Camaris cave. So let's start with Comos. As indicated by Phil Betancourt and Aladis van de Mortel, the very scanty pottery remains from the site of Comos during the pre palatial period indicate that the site was then at the most sporadically inhabited. The earliest architectural remains of Comos dated to MN1B are scanty and scattered on the central hillside, whereas in the southern era, much MN1B pottery was found in the construction fields of building AA. Although the MN1B remains are extremely feeble, Nevertheless, it is possible to reconstruct the MN1B occupational history of Comos from drastic changes in the quantities of pottery finds, which from MN1A to MN1B become numerous. The recent revision conducted by Van de Mortel has also demonstrated that the pottery from Comos is identical to that from Festos. Let's go to Agietriada. La Rosa excavations revealed the existence of scanty MM structures and of several ceramic deposits, which are mostly dams. It is difficult to recognize the layout of the MN1B sediment at Yetriada, but on the basis of the location of the ceramic deposits within the site, it is possible to gain information about the sediment. As already suggested by Carinci, the first nucleus of the sediment could be localized on the western slopes of the hill between the Sacello, the area of the Bastione, and the area excavated by Halber. Although, although this area revealed also some MN1A ceramic deposits, making it possible that it was already inhabited from in MN1A, nevertheless, the dramatic rise in the quantities of MN1B pottery fragments found here shows that in MN1B, a new sediment was increasing in size and growth. It is interesting to see that at Agia Triada in MN1B, the major investment is not in the settlement, but in the funerary area, where the course, first, the foundation of a second tallest tomb, that is tomb beta. Second, the continuity of use of tallest tomb A, as you see here, which was found in early MN2. And third, the strong increase in the use of some annexes to the south of Tolos A, known as Camerette, and these annexes in use from MN1A were found plenty of elaborated jugs with relief decoration, also known as barbotin jugs. From MN1A to MN1B, the Yetriada funerary area shows a great change, not only for the foundation of a second tomb in the same symmetry, but also for the change of both the typology and the focus of the funeral rituals. As already pointed out by Carinci, in MN1A occurred a massive use of Tolos A and of its annexes to the east, in combination with an intense ceremonial activity involving drink and food consumption and large quantities of persons. On the contrary, in MN1B, the funeral ritual seems to be limited to less people not involving in food consumption. In fact, although the two tallest tombs are both in use, the best evidence of MN1B is not offered by the vessels retrieved from the respective circular funerary rooms, but by the large amounts of jugs found in the Camerette. These jugs, as well as the other few vases found in both the tallest tombs, are of the same type of those retrieved from the settlement of Estos. Let's go to Camillari. In MN1B, it occurs the ex novo foundation of the Camillari Cemetery with the construction of the tallest tomb, of two annexes, and of an open area to the north. 
Differently from prepalatial symmetries, Camillari has been provided with a culture for ritual activities sin since its foundation in MN1B. Nevertheless, in MN1B, the area for the performance of funeral rituals was restricted to few people and limited to the northwestern part of the culture. From the MN1B ceramic evidence, the ritual activities performed in the open era were not large-scale ceremonies involving drink and food consumption, as attested in MN1A symmetries, such as Agia Triada, Monio di Gitria, and other prepalatial symmetries of Misera. In fact, in MN1B, no evidence is offered by pottery and other implements associated to food and drink consumption since no cooking pots, no bowls, and only two drinking vessels are attested, while most of the pottery consists of pouring vessels. It is noteworthy that in the MN1B phase, the symmetries of Agia Triada and Camillari displays a similar, similar pattern in terms of the following factors. First, in MN1B, Camillari and Agia Triada are the only known sites of the Messara plain showing new foundations of tallest tombs. Second, in both the funerary complexes, there is an investment of much labor in the construction of a monumental tomb, tallest tomb, which, however, is scantily used and is not the focal point of the ritual activities. Third, the focus of the ritual activities is outside the tallest tomb, respectively in the northern courtyard at Camillari and near the Camerette at Agietriada. Fourth, the ritual activities do not involve food and drink consumption. Rather, the high presence of jugs shows that they were mostly based on pouring actions. The same trend observed in the aforementioned funerary complexes is also attested at the Camaris cave where have been retrieved many pouring vessels in comparison with very few drinking pots. The exponential increase attesting the number of vases from MN1A to MN1B reveals that the use of the K was closely connected with the foundation of the palace. In fact, it is the only place that shows typologies of vases otherwise attested only at MN1B festos, such as the aforementioned globular open spouted jars. Let's draw some preliminary conclusions about the MN1B phase in the Western Mesera plain. First of all, it seems, that it seems clear that in MN1B, a leap to monumentality occurred at the first site with the foundation of the Southwest building and with the appearance of a new architectural innovation, namely the orthostat facade. This seems the result of a project that required a large investment of energy and thus the ability to mobilize a workforce. At the same time, in MN1B at Vestos, a new input in terms of innovation and artistic experimentation in pottery is attested. Second, we may safely conclude that the increase in the amount of pottery retrieved from Comos, Agia Triada, and the Camaris Cave in MN1B reflects a significant increase in pottery depositions. This, in turn, indicates that both the settlements of Agia Triada and Comos experienced a rather sudden, significant expansion in MN1B, and that the, at the Camaris Cave occurred an impressive increase in its use and frequentation. The survey conducted by Waters and Hatsi Valiano had also revealed an increase in number of new sites in MN1B. Third, in MN1B, we observe a new investment in the funerary complexes near Festos, with a foundation of new tombs at Agia Triada and Camillari, whereas the majority of the Messara cemeteries with Tolos tomb went out of use or into decline precisely in MN1B, or else changed their function from burial to cult places. Finally, together with these new building operations occurred in the cemeteries of Agia Triada and Camillari, a substantial change in ritual practices is, clear, is clearly visible in both the funerary complexes. This makes it clear that in MN1B, a new type of ritual behavior appear, not in line either with the funerary activities of the previous period, that is MN1A, or with the communal ceremonies performed in the Festus Palace, which were both based on drink and food consumption. This suggests that in MN1B, the communities investing in the two funerary complexes of Camillari and the Hietriada were somehow more independent from the festing community in comparison, for example, with nearby Comos, 
which displays the same material culture as Festos from the time of its foundation onwards. The case of the Camaras cave in MN1B is less clear. On the one hand, the ceramic evidence speaks in favor of a strong and exclusive connection between the cave and Festos. On the other hand, the ritual activities performed there do not seem to imitate the palatial ones. Now let's look at the MM2A phase in the Western Mesera Plain. At Festas, MM2A is an important phase due to the following series of innovations. First, new architectural alteration variation in the Southwest building. Second, the appearance of new wares, shapes, and decorative forms. Third, the appearance of the wheel throwing technique. Concerning the Southwest building, in MM2A, it goes through the architectural and functional transformation, which includes some alteration of the access system and of the internal circula circulation patterns. According to Carinci, the Southwest building was provided with a new and second access from the Lower West Court through Corridor 50. I have already suggested elsewhere that this change could be due to the need for more effective control of the building likely connected to new groups attending it. With regards to the pottery, in MM2A appears new ware, such as the polychrome buffer served surface ware and the creamy coated ware, that are well attested at Festos, but which occur with only few fragments at Ayetriada and Comos. These wares are also almost entirely absent in the funerary complexes of Camillari and Ghiatriada and in the other cemeteries of the Western Messala Plain. In terms of shapes, we might point out the elaborate three-handled jugs in barbotin ware or in polychrome on buffer served surface ware, which present peculiar profiles that imitate metallic prototypes. The recent study I have undertaken on the technology of protopalatial ceramic from Festos allowed me to confirm that a new forming technique was introduced in MM2A, when appear some buses that are entirely manufactured through the use of the wheel throwing technique. Uh, these entire wheel thrown buses are represented only by some shapes produced in new specific wares which appeared in, at MM2A Festos. They are the following. First, handleless conical cups in fine plate wear. Second, cups in fine dark and light wear. And third, cups and spouted jars in polychrome buff reserved, reserved surface wear. Considering the contemporary occurrence at MM2A Festos of the introduction of an innovative forming technique, that is wheel throwing, and the remodeling of the Southwest building, we cannot exclude the possibility that the forming technique was introduced by new groups attending the Festian building. Although the MM2A phase in Crete remains unknown or is simply not easily stratigraphically identifiable, I will nonetheless try to see how this phase is represented in the center surrounding Festos. Let's see Comos. At Comos, the architecture remains datable to MM2A are few. Nevertheless, there are many points in the, in the site revealing the ceramic deposits which contain MM2A pottery. Together with some deposits found by Betancourt in the central hillside, the MM2A pottery was found in large quantities in the construction fields of the building AA, which were studied and published by Van de Mortel. According to her, the building AA was found in MM2B. Nevertheless, my last revision of MM2A ceramic deposit at Festos has permitted me to date the last pottery found in the construction fields of the building AA to MMM2A. MM2A making it probably that the building AA was constructed during MM2A or at the beginning of MM2B. Concerning the settlement of Aguetriada, on the basis of the scanty MM structures and of the scarce MM2A ceramic material which is attested at the site, it is difficult to garner an idea of the layout of the settlement in this phase. Also for the funerary area, we have the same difficulties. Because of the lack of publication at, of the necropolis, the ceramic evidence of MM2A from the Yetriada funerary area is really difficult to find out. Nevertheless, it seems that from MM2A, the Yetriada cemetery begins its decline. Indeed, both the Toloi A and B, A and B have revealed only few vases which could be dated to MM2A or more generally to MM2. 
whereas the Camerita have not provided MM2 vessels. Concerning Camillari, in MM2A, the quantity and the distribution of the pottery suggest an increase in the use of the symmetry. We also observe an increase in drinking pots and the appearance of a new pouring vessel that is the bridge spouted jar. In particular, some MM2A bridge spouted jars display new innovative decorations reproducing metallic prototypes. It is noteworthy that the appearance at Camillari of these new forms with impressive or incised decoration imitating metalwork follows the same trend attested at Festos from MM2A. From the recent study by Van de Mortel, it is clear that the Camaris cave goes on to be used in a significant way from MM1B to MM2B. Indeed, looking at the table where she reports the number of vases from the cave for each period, one sees that from MM2, the Camaris cave experienced an increase in use and frequentation. So looking at the, at the Western Mesra plain in MM2A phase, we see that the Festos Palace continues the process of monumentalization that began in, MM2, in MM1B, alongside with new experimentation in pottery technology. At the Giatriade in MM2A, the pottery is not clear, whereas at the Comos in the Camaris cave, the increase in the amount seems to indicate an expansion in size and or in use. Moreover, the new shapes that appear at Camillari, such as the bridge spout jar, show the adoption of ceremonial sets used at Festos, suggesting a social strategy of imitation and emulation of ritual performances acted out in the corner areas of the Festos Palace. Festos still maintains its role of an innovative leader in pottery, producing new wares and shapes not always attested elsewhere, but frequently imitated by all the Mesera centers. From MM2A, the stronger influence of Vestos on the material cult uh, culture of the nearby centers, such as Comos and Camillari, is attested, making it likely that its growth and consolidation already began in MM2A and not in MM2B, as suggested by some scholars. Let's go to the mm 2 b in the Western Sahara Plain. It is not possible to ascertain exactly the time of the last works of monumentalization that occurred at Festos. Nevertheless, in an unspecified period between mm 2 a and mm 2 b some urban and architectural changes occurred at the palatial site. These works involved, first, the relocation of the facade, facade of the Northwest building, with the addition of a new orthostat facade implying an enlargement of its storage facilities. Second, the construction of the four culures, the deep circular pits common in all the Maimon palaces. Third, uh, the raising of the level of the Middle West curve, together with the addition of the sideways. Four, the construction of the theater area. And five, the construction of the momental propylene, propylene second, which allows access from the northern to the southern area of the site, as well as from the Middle West Square to the interior of the palace. The wars that occur in the Southwest building were mostly devoted to a better connection of this building with the northern area of the palace, and especially with the Middle West Square. According to Carinci, the Middle Manon II monumentalization of the Middle West Court of Festos was fundamentally due to the need for imitation of the classical model. This phase of the palace monumentalization corresponds to growth at Comas, at Ayetriada, and in the funerary complex of Camillari. As already stated, the construction of building AA at Comas took place between MM2A and MM2B. Although little foundation remains of building AA are preserved, according to the excavators, the building was completed by MM2B and then destroyed by the same earthquake which destroyed both Festos and the Petriata. If the building AA was constructed from MM2A to MM2B, as I believe, that means that the aforementioned transformation occurred in the palatial site of Festos and the construction of building AA at Comos could be contemporary. As well pointed by Van de Mortel, the amount to be destruction levels of Comas have revealed ceramic material which is still identical to the Festus production, 
and though some peculiar and elaborated buses were attested at the stores, are not present in MMTB commons. The, at the Gentriada, the majority of the ceramic deposits found here, which mostly consist of fields, contain ceramic material that to MMTB. The pottery records suggest that the Gentriada sediment has increased in size and importance. As already suggested by Carinci, it seems that in MMTB the sediment expanded to the north and northeast as many deposits containing mostly MMTB pottery were found in this area. Nevertheless, when the size of the sediment starts to grow, the necropolis is already declining. This is demonstrated by the fact that in MMTB only few buses from the Taurus Tomb A have been found. It is also particularly interesting that in the same period as the growth of the sediment, the area between the necropolis and the sediment went through several transformations. Indeed, as presented by La Rosa in 2001, a new function of this area seems to be associated with a paved rectangular space constructed to the west of the Camerita. A rectangular stone with small hollows, which could be an offering table, canos, was found in its center. This space has been interpreted by the excavator as a sacred and public space, which in my opinion could be specifically linked to worship of ancestors buried in the no longer used necropolis. And what happens then at Camillari? In an amendment to be, the Camillari symmetry is characterized by a strong increase in the use of the symmetry, attested by the foundation of a new tomb that is Milona Lacco, it is located 200 meters northeast to the first and main torus tomb. By the expansion of the occupied areas towards east, by the explosion in the ceramic material that consists mostly of cooling and drinking vessels, as you see here, and, and we can see that the Camillari symmetry in an MTB is also characterized by new ossuaries that are uh, rooms beta and delta, and new rituals in association with the relocation of bones, mainly connected with a new interest in ancestor worship. And fun, finally, by the installation of a slab altar in the courtyard. For an M to B, the evidence suggests a spatial and functional differentiation of the spaces outside of tomb where there are areas exclusively, exclusively linked to mortuary feasting and others used mainly for non-funerary activities, likely connected to the worship of dead ancestors. So it is evident that in mm to be a big explosion in wealth with a strong involvement in monumentalization is attested not only at Festos, but also at Comos, where the site is provided with a monumental building AA, at Hagia Triada, with a dramatic rise in pottery in the settlement and a new paved space in the area between the settlement and the necropolis, which has already gone out of use, at Camillari, with the construction of a new tolos and the equipment of two ossuaries and of a slab altar, and at the Camaris cave, which goes on to preserve an exclu exclu sorry, exclusive link with the palatial site of Vistos, as attested by the presence of peculiar vases that are the stamnet jars, well attested only in the palatial site, as demonstrated by Van der Mortel. And what happened with the earthquake at the end of MM2B that destroyed most of the sites in the western Mesra plain? At Festos, after MM2B destruction of the first palace, there is some reuse of the ruined structures, such as the house of the ramp and the bastion Ovest but major reconstruction does not appear until late Manoa 1b. In fact, recent re-examination of the palatial deposits has conclusively dated the second palace of Vestos to late Manoa 1b. Comas and the Gietriada suffered the same destruction as occurred at Festos, and the Camaris cave went out of use at the same time as the palace's destruction. As pointed out by Van de Mortel, vast deposits in the Camaris cave dropped dramatically during the neopalatial period, likely in connection with the destruction of the Festus Palace. The only site which continued to be used in a significant way was Camillari, with, which had its acme in a mem tree. In a mem tree late Minoan A, 
in Western Misera occurs a watershed, first due to the destruction of the first palace of Vestos and to the difficulties it suffered during MM3, and then due to the changes occurring in the nearby sites during this period. We see the progressive development of Comas with its new and important commercial role, as well as the significant construction project at Ayetriada, where from MM3 to late Minoan A, a new villa is constructed and at Camillari, which was at the acme of its, queue, of its use. During MM3, late Manon 1A, there was no palatial center in Messara, making the case for emergence of Knossian dominance from MM3, late Manon 1A, more likely. So let's look at the broader pictures of the entire protopalatial period in the western Messara plain. Let's go to the discussion. It is well accepted that the concept of curve-centered building goes back to early Minoan 2B, when the first such buildings were founded as ritual foci for common and regional ceremonial activities. Nevertheless, in the Man 1B Western Mesara, the choice of constructing something new, monumental, and innovative, such as the Man 1B Southwest building of Estos, with its orthostat facade, has to be viewed as an element of discontinuity in the Western Mesara landscape from the previous prepalatial period. Moreover, although the construction of the first palace of Estos has to be viewed as a gradual development from MM1B until the strong monumentalization in MM2B, the territories which surrounds Festos nevertheless shows a sudden and significant expansion of sites precisely in MM1B. We have settlements such as Comos Nagiatriada, where an increase in the pottery record is evident, as well as the foundation of new tombs and the significant increase in use of the Camaras cave, which from MM1B started to be used intensively. It is evident that in MM1B, the new investment in the center of Vistos finds counterpart in the surrounding centers, where new investment is also tested. Nevertheless, in comparison with other centers, the Festus Palace displays its distinctiveness in its material culture, mostly in architecture and in pottery. Was the palace constructed by a group that had access to new and rich resources and thus the ability to construct something innovative and monumental? Or was the palace the result of a collective action, as, as recently uh, been suggested, and if it is the result of a collective action, who were the agents of this change? And why did they choose to invest mostly in one center? We can suppose that this collective action was driven not only by local people living around the palace, such as in the mm one b houses on the slopes of the palace hill, but also by the groups living in the new settlements close by, such as at, uh, the nearby Comos. That means by different groups, who decide to invest in the construction of a monumental building devoted to the preparation performance of common rituals connected with regional identity. If this is the case, it remains to be seen whether the different community of the Western Mesera Plain were involved in the same way in this common action. In fact, we have already seen that in Amman 1B, communities investing in the, in the two funerary complexes of Camilari and Yetriada were somehow more independent from the Festen community, in comparison, for example, with nearby Comos, which displays the same material character as Festos from Amman 1B throughout the end of Amman 2B. Can we conclude that the communities of Camilari and Yetriada were less or not involved in the big project of Festos? And what about the changes in MM2? The aforementioned architectural changes occurred in the southwest building of Estos from MM2A to MM2V to B. The appearance, use of a new forming technology in MM2A and the well-attested representation inside the building of a large number of different seals, as demonstrated by Maria Relacchi, are three factors which suggest that from MM2, new groups started to attend the Festen building. But who were these, these new groups? And what about the link between the MM2 monumentalization of the Southwest building at Festos and the increase in the number of the groups attending it? If many groups of the region were involved in the monumentalization of Festos, we are yet to understand how this center was administered, 
whether the MM2 monumentalization was driven by local groups living in the northwest building of the site or on the slopes of the Palace Hill, leaving the regional groups to be involved in a different or lesser way, and what the relationship between the local groups and the other regional and more distant groups attending it was, and what degree the various communities were involved in the palace activities. In particular, it remains to be understood that the relationship of Festos with the growing, the growing communities of Comas and Ghiatriada and Camillari, which from MM2A, MM2B, display a material culture that is identical or imitative of the Festian one. For instance, I wonder whether they were particularly involved in the monumentalization of the palace in comparison, for instance, with, for instance, with farther villages, as it seems that from MM2, the increasing role of Festos in the surrounding territory had a strong effect on their growth and economic development. And still, I wonder whether the near sites of Agitriada and Comos were so involved in the MM2A, MM2B works occurring inside the palace as to become successors in the period which followed the destruction of the first palace of Festos. Further study could confirm or deny the existence of a site hierarchy in the Western Mesera Plain. Anyway, it is interesting to observe that, that most of, the, of these sites, whatever settlements, cultural places, and funerary areas, follow the same trend of the palace. That means a leap to monumentality and the sudden explosion in pottery quantity in MM1B, and then a gradual growth during MM2B, until the end of this phase, when a strong earthquake caused the destruction of most of them. This trend is well visible at Comos, in the sediment of Agetriada, and at the Camaris cave. Different cases are represented by the funerary areas. Indeed, Agetriada started its decline in MM2, while Camillari reaches its acme in MM3. It is also not accidental that the great watershed in the Western Mesera Plain occurred in MM3, when no palace is present on the territory, at least until late Manoa 1B. Since much work still remains to be done at Festos in the Western Mesera Plain, and many questions remain to be answered, this contribution aims only to better present the archaeological evidence we have for Festos and the sites surrounding it. It's finished. <laughs>